here today and we talk you through our camper van, Alice. So come on inside. Now, as you can see, Alice is quite small. Um, but before I start, you're going to see this little lady. This is our old Springer Spaniel. Um, she's 14. Uh, she's a little bit blind and she's one eye and she's a little bit deaf. And we absolutely love her to pieces. Don't be Bubba. Yeah. And she loves the camper van. She would literally spend every single day of her life in this camper van if she could. Um, so this is why we like being in the camper van a lot. But, but I'm digressing. Right, right. So this is an Opel Vivaro. It's 2007 and it's a short wheelbase. Um, and it originally was a minibus, um, which is why we have windows, we have doors either side, we have the back door here. We originally had two windows here, but we block them up. So the van came with windows. It came with this section here that we covered. So um, so rather than starting from scratch, like with a, with, a, with a commercial van, we had windows in situ, we had a floor in situ. No, we did have to put another floor in, but we had, a, there was a rubber floor there. Um, and we bought it about nearly two years ago. And now to be honest with you, we bought it and then we had to get a load of work done on it. Um, things like just getting everything done in the engine. We had to get gears. We had to get brakes. Am I right and say we needed brakes on them? We also had to get the bottom of this. Living in the west of Ireland, close to the sea, everything gets quite rusty. So the underneath of this needed to be treated for rust. We had a camper van years ago which kind of nearly fell apart because of the rust. So rust is a very big thing that we needed to get done and we did that. Um, and while we were having all that work done to make sure that the van was perfectly roadworthy and would stay roadworthy, because rather than investing in all this money getting this done and then the engine going, the engine going kaput, um, we, kept, we decided to do a temporary conversion for the first year. And the temporary conversion had kind of two purposes. One was to make sure that the van stayed running. And the second one was that our original camper van had the standard layout and it had a kind of a fake rock and roll bed. Um, and I really hated the bed, really hated the bed and had an idea in my head that I wanted a fixed bed. Now, a fixed bed is great, but probably not in this size of a space. It's quite small. Um, but we did, we went with the fixed bed. Um, so that, the bed pretty much filled up this entire space up to here. We had a tiny weeny L space here that we used pallet wood to do that. So we did it all very cheaply. The only thing that we spent a lot of money on the first conversion on was actually this mattress. And we bought our five inch memory foam mattress, um, which we then repurposed to do this sofa and our bed presently. Um, but that was there. Um, this was pallets. We had a little sink. We had, we for cooking, we used camp the camper cooktops. Then we had a little, what do you call it? A, a, like a, a fridgey, but it wasn't a fridge. Cooler what was box. it? A cooler box. We had a cooler box, which we never plugged in ever. So the cooler box was here. It was like a giant box for storing food. Um, and that was the way it was for about a year. We used the camper van. We got everything done to it. And then we decided that we really liked it, but we were going to go for a conversion that suited everything that we needed. So we had a certain set of requirements. We wanted to have a space where you could have a bed and a space to sit down. So like a living space, we wanted to have a proper cooking area. We wanted a lot of storage space that was separated up for us. So this basically is what we came up with. Now to start with, what we have here is we have an L-shaped couch. Um, and this L-shaped couch doubles as our, okay baby, ah, boo -boo. Uh, it doubles up as our bed. Um, and underneath this L-shaped space is where we have a lot of storage. So basically along this section here, um, we have our leisure battery, we have our inverter, um, all of our electrics to run the lights, um, to run the pump, to run the sockets are all under here. Um, and at the present moment, we're doing it from a split charge relay. So as we drive, we recharge the battery. 
in the future we will be doing a solar panel but we just decided not to do that right now um, and so essentially this is where the electrics are so this turns on everything this turns on our lights 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 this section here is actually for these lights, isn't it? No, it's not. Let me think. Hello. This lights. Here we go. So these are the lights. We have two, one either side. They move in all directions and they also have USB ports. Um, that's because then you can actually charge your phones or we usually have an iPad here that we can use it, it doubled up as a TV, um, charge it here. That'll operate our small fan. Um, so we just wanted to have lots of port sockets all over the place that was accessible to us. We also have double socket here with USB inverters, in, uh, USB imports, and another one here. These ones run off the inverter. This then runs the sink pump. And I think, did you leave this one free? Because at some point, hey, Alan, Alan is behind the camera. <laughs> uh, that one is going to be for the isn't it the air ceiling vent, fan. the ceiling fan, isn't it? So that's what, so we have the wires run there, but we don't have the ceiling fan in place at the moment. Um, so basically that is what is under here. And there's a, and right here, there is the, it's like our toolbox, isn't it? For the camper van, so any bits that go wrong, you know, you always have stuff like screwdrivers and stuff to make sure that everything anything that could go wrong you have something to fix it and that's under there which then basically leaves this section free so that is all storage under here um, and you access that by you just pop this off and that's the storage now the box in there we have another one that sits right next to it and we usually have extra food dry goods storage for food under there um, on top of that box we have our camp seats, we have our shower, um, what else do we have? Camp seat, shower, anything really that we need with us. I've, at the present moment I have blankets under there. And then to make the bed what we do is we grab this and we pull it out. It runs parallel to here. This clips back onto it here like that. Hey, boop, busy, boop. And we fill in this space with this one and this one. So that sits here and that creates our bed. Now our bed isn't very long because I keep saying this, we're not very tall. <laughs> I might look at it here, but I'm, we're not very tall. Um, so this suits us perfectly. It's not, and I wanted to, again, as I was saying, prioritize storage. So the more amount of space I could leave here, the bigger our storage would be here. So that basically is our bed. Um, now, the bed comfortably sleeps the two of us and Missy um, most of the time. Sometimes she sleeps down there. But we can also have two other people, including us, for dinner. So I've, we've had people sit here, two here, and we have another seat down here. And our table is here. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the table with you um, towards the end of this. But our table sits here, so we have comfortably have four people sitting um which is nice you know and it's it's actually quite it doesn't feel claustrophobic or anything in here when you're doing it it's actually nice um and then moving on from here we move into the kitchen area so that's the bed and the seating area oh bless us my head's all over the place oh what was that oh that was our that was our um lid Right, so the next thing that we have here, have we gone very dark in here? No. no. Okay, okay. So this is our cooker, and we decided that we were going to have two, Miss Miss, Miss Miss. Oh, if you hear Missy, she's just licking herself. You can just ignore her. Anyway, that's our two ring cooker, and this is our sink. As I said, you switch a plug over there and that turns on this. That engages the pump here and we have running water. We can do all our dishes, wash our teeth, face, everything here. Um, 
our cooking we have our gas barrel is in this section here now at the present moment we have one of the small yellow color gas isn't it once um, but in the future what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going with the blue one which will which will give us more space as well for more storage in this section um, and then that's just our two rings so cook here wash here now for storage well actually no water in this section here at the base down here that's where our water is so what we have is we have two um pl two plastic tub barrels these are plastic containers containers and they're 12 liters each 12 liters of fresh water and 12 liters of wastewater which is gray water isn't it or is it gray water wastewater 12 right. liter to receive yes the gray water oh yeah well an empty 12 liter we fill this one and we turn on the tap and it empties to that one <laughs> and then we have 12 litres to dispose of. Um, but essentially we don't really ever use the full 12, I'd say we get to 10 and that's it. And then this section here is our storage. So we decided that we wanted to put our food in here, we wanted to put our cups, cutlery, saucepans and they basically, they both fit in here so they're easily accessible. Okay. That would be where we have our plates, bowls, saucepans, extra food, cutlery, some tea, some coffee. Um, and that was all sitting there. Now, what we figured out, because literally this is what the setup was and that was blank. And when we were out in the first few days of using the camper van, we kind of made a checklist of places that were places we put things you know things like our phone things like um if you were putting the cup down where did you put the cup down um if you wanted to have a cup of tea you were driving along you pulled in you want a cup of tea or a cup of coffee um how accessible was everything to make sure that you could get it so what we decided was we wanted teas and coffees to be easily accessible um to prevent us from getting takeaways all the time so this is where this basket came in. This is where the kettle fits in there. The coffee pot fits in there. We have our cups. We have placemats in there. We have strainers. We also went for this one and we decided to keep everything gray. Everything was gray in it. Just so as that we didn't have anything color wise that jumped out at you. Um, so this one then is where we keep our mats, our coasters, small plates. And the other thing that I figured out that I did a lot was I kept putting cups down on top of this. Um, so if I was sitting there, I'd put a cup down or I might drop a book in it or I'd drop my phone on it or worse still, keys. Keys here, drop it on that. This is glass and it would break it. So what we decided was a easy solution of that was to buy one of these. And basically these are um, dish trainer mats, aren't they? That's, yeah. And they're well padded, so we bought two of them, one to cover this one and another one to cover this one. And they worked out perfectly. So they just keep this from being scraped, they keep it from being cracked. If you can break it, Tina will break it. So it's a good safety mechanism and precaution to make sure I don't. Um, so, and we just keep these stored here and we have and when we bought these two, we decided we'd buy some extra baskets. We have another one here. Um, just if we're, I can put books in there, I can put chargers in there. At the present moment, we have our fan sitting on it. Um, magnets, just to hold things in place. We have another one at the top of the bed. Again, you can just pop your phone into it and it's right next to the USB port. So if you need to charge your phone while you're asleep, it's there and we also had two here then so we have one two here and that just is to keep things that you need that are easily accessible getting in and out the door for it's really important for our keys and um, we also have a uh, that's a clock but it's also it tells the temperature inside here and that's we, we need that with missy just so that she doesn't overheat in the back of the van um, so that is that small storage kitchen area sleeping area um, and then what we're going to do is move on to the main storage area. So what we decided was we were going to have this section at the back of the van. Um, 
and in here we have two compartments and we left the compartments pretty open so I open this up here and you can see so the compartments are pretty open so this top one here is for Tina and this one here is for Alan and we thought about putting shelves in there and then we thought about different stuff but really what we ended up doing was we got different size bags and boxes um, that then would take the different items that we used so things like um, our electrical equipment, our clothes, our extra shoes, if you wanted um, swimwear, if you wanted hiking clothes, if you wanted, we do a lot of cycling, so if we wanted our cycling bags, helmets, they all fit into that. And then we can organise them in any way that we choose fit. So if we're tidier or if we're messier and throw everything in. But it doesn't matter because it's only either one of us using either one of them. So that's how we organize this. Now, Alan, if you want to pop on this light. So us, there is actually a space in here, just if we wanted to access it at nighttime, that this light goes on and it actually illuminates inside this one. And then Alan fitted a light switch in here for himself. So if he needs to access the bottom one here, he can actually just flick on a light. And these are our lights. Alan, do you want to flick on the other lights? So these are our sets of lights. So, so we have three in the strip this side and three in the strip that side. And as I also mentioned, we had the two, you know, so we can just do spotlighting. Um, you would, so we don't have to have them in. And if you want to read a book in bed at night, you can just point them down over your head. But so that's the lights. You want to flip them off? Okay. Right. Okay. So after the storage, one of the other things that was really important that I wanted to have was toilet facilities. Um, and I know this is a tiny space, but to me it was really important. So under here, this is where we have our toilet and it just slots out and slots in. Um, it's a 10 litre outwell, isn't it? It's a low profile. So it was the smallest one that we could get to take up the least amount of space. And then all of the toiletries and um, like toilet paper and the stuff that goes with the toilet all sits in there with us. So that's our toilet and that sits in the bottom there. And then we have this seat here. And what this seat is, is it acts as a, a seat, but it's also a storage box. Now, Mady, can I get you up for a minute? Up and over. Up and over. Right, so this is our storage box. And in here, this is where we have all our bed clothes. Now these storage boxes are great because seat, fill it up when we have our bed clothes out. This folds up and sits inside the lid here, so it folds down to a tiny space. Um, we always have a second one of these, so we have a second one that sits in at the back here. I'll show you now, I'll pop this in here. And I'll pop back here. As you can see here, there's a space. So because of the curve of the door and the curve of the way it goes out, there's a space about this wide from the top to the bottom all along here. So what we did with this space was we put in, we have our another second one of these box flat. So we have two box seats if we want to. And we also have, did I mention already that we have two other seats under here? I did, didn't Outside I? Outside camp seats. Outside camp seats. Um, we also have a small little table tray. So if we don't want to take out our full table, we can use the table tray and then we put in clothes hangers because I used to find that coats and dry robes took up so much space. So they, we use one of those like strip hangers that you just screwed in and all of our coats are, coats also are dry robes, then our towel robes for swimming, all just pops in here. Um, and that's that. And then other bits of accessories that you then have to deal with is we decided on curtains. Um, now our original version, what we did was we left the curtains, we had magnets and they just clipped on and clipped off. But I wanted something that was handy, that was would stay in place and you just pull it back and forward. So we decided on these, they're blackout curtains. They're, they're designed for the shape of this van. Now, it's there when you you just give the a, the gear isn't it on the type of van and they tell you what curtains fit it. Now ironically enough, when we said that, we got 
a curtain for the back door, a curtain for an opening door and a curtain for a fixed door. So if you happen to have two opening doors and you want to get curtains like that, make sure to say that your second door opens because we had to actually cut down that one, this one here, do I say? We had to cut down this one because if this door didn't open, it wouldn't have had this. So this section here, we had to cut off, didn't we? We did. We did. Right, so, but that, it was fine. It was a tiny little job, but still it was like, it was something that we had to do. Um, the other thing that we have in here is we also installed a roof vent. As I said, it doesn't have a fan at the present moment, but it is wired for a fan. Um, Alan cut this out, scary to cut out. And before I go any further, um, I did an, I did an Insta, I Insta storied the entire conversion. Um, and I will put a link to that in the description box below if you'd like to see those Insta stories. The other thing that we went, we put into this, which we felt was really important, was a fire extinguisher, which is right here, handy and accessible for here, and a carbon monoxide alarm. That was another thing that we, we when we went traveling through Spain, um, over the past number of years, it was like we'd go three months at a time. We always brought one of these with us just in case. So that's very handy to have. Um, we also carry extra water. So we would have, oh, you thirsty? I'll give you water in a minute. Thirsty? You thirsty? Right, so basically we have five liters here and we have another 10 liters of water that's actually stored on the opposite door because this door can open up and when you open it up, you, you can access this storage under here from that side. And we usually, on the outside of that storage, we carry extra water. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else. I mean, apart from like the actual conversion, like the last thing we did was added a curtain to the front. Now we did buy those, um, you know, those, what you call them, thermal. the thermal, ones that cover the front two sides and the front and um, they're wind up basically they're the windscreen thermal. covers thermal blanket blackout, blackout yeah. blinds um, and we use them 50 percent of the time now here do you want to pop up here and do this way around here so we store we store the thermal blinds here here right there um, and as you can see here, they're stored here. What we decided was, if we didn't put something here to stop this from falling forward, the bed would just, we just literally, we'd slide off into the seat. And we wanted to use the space here. So we created this piece of, we basically cut a curved piece of wood there. Like that, can you see it there? So this curved piece of wood, so it essentially acts as a headboard, but also as a divider. Um, it also gives us a space to have mounted the lights to. It gives us, it creates a space that is between the front, the front seat and the back here. And we, in here, this is where we put the blinds, anything else. Sometimes we also put bags back here. Towels can be popped in here. But it also, sometimes we choose not to use the ones at the front here. Um, and what we do here is we use this as a curtain. So that's our curtain, right? That's how that works. So it separates the front from the back. Um, this was just basically a plastic rail from B and Q, and we screwed it into the top. And that's how that works. And then finally, the table. Okay, our table is stored in here. Okay, and as is our dustpan and dust brush. When you have a dog, you are doing a lot of sweeping and cleaning. So it's just really handy to have the dustpan and dust brush to hand. But, so this is where we put our, as I was saying, we have, we can have up to four people, including the dog, having dinner in here. And this, when you're doing a conversion, everything that's small seems to cost a lot more money. So 
this was possibly the one that surprised me the most. This leg was 100 euros and Alan was absolutely convinced we needed it and I was absolutely convinced we didn't and I was wrong because it's absolutely brilliant. So basically this is the section you get with it. You get this section which covers here. You screw that into the floor. This is the leg um, and then what you do is you pop this in, you twist it tighten this up okay so that's your leg you can pop that in there and then you're looking for the top of the table and that pops out here so as part of the leg you also get this that it clips into and you screw this onto the bottom of the table you pop this up very maybe pop this up here and this is how we have dinner so there's me there's Alan and two people and Missy or if you wanted, so I could use this to do some work at, I can twist and turn it. Now, you just make sure that you have the leg in properly, so that's twisted. Now, what it's also handy for is if you're cooking, and this is where you're cooking, and you want to do any prep or you need to have, you know, just saucepans or plates or chopping boards or anything that you need, all of it perfectly works here, like this. You've also another bit over there. No, but it's made from the same. Oh, of this. yeah. So it's one piece of wood. This piece and this piece of wood was all one piece of wood. Um, and so we measured out that the kitchen had to be this length. Whatever was left over was going to be the table. And this is what was left over. So this is our table. Um, it's great. It's worked out really well. Um, you can, I've sat at this and I've worked. I've drawn at it. Alan has... We've cooked dinners at it, we've had dinner at it. It's, as a multi-purpose table, it's been absolutely brilliant. So the leg was definitely worth the money. Yes, hasn't it, Alan? Yeah. Right, so that's the table. Um, I just pop it off like so. And you pop it back in like this. Yeah, twist the leg off. You pop this back in. This goes down here like that, and that's it all sorted. So that's it back then to normal. I think that's where we're going to leave it today. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. If you have any questions on anything that we've gone through, um, anything, anything at all, literally just in the comments below, and I promise I will answer every single question. Um, and in the meantime, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our doggy and we're going to go for a small walk up Mullick Moor whilst the weather is still nice and we have no rain. Um, and again, thank you. Thank and you very much. We shall take you on our adventures when we are out and about with Alice. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.